Yo guys, Ponchi here, and today I want to talk about the audio editor on your Octatrack Mark II. Let's go. Alright guys, so today I wanted to talk about the audio editor, which is located right here. And ultimately, the audio editor is used for editing samples, whether that be samples that were recorded on the Octatrack itself, or ones that were transferred to the Octatrack via the compact flashcard. So, if you go straight to audio editor, well, first off, I am on a flex track right here. And on this flex track, I have a sample assigned. Um, as of right now, it's just one of the sample recording buffers for this flex track. So, the fifth recording buffer. And this is what I have on there right now. So it's just kind of a kind of a, a bit of a synth phrase that I recorded from my circuit tracks here. It's not important that you have that sample. You can do this with any sample. So anyway, I have that assigned to track five. So I go to the audio editor. So I'm just going to go through this menu one by one, go through each parameter and talk about them. But in an effort to keep this video a little shorter, I'm just going to split it up into a couple parts. So first off, in the source menu here, you have the trim menu. So the way to access um, the different functions of the trim menu is to hit yes. So if you hit yes, you'll see that you can set the start here. You can set loop here. You can set the end here here, you can reset to default, or you can change the view. So the other interesting thing about this one in particular is if you look over at your encoders over here, you'll notice that the gray labels underneath, they actually correspond specifically to the trim menu here. So while you can use these in this menu, you can also manipulate them with the encoders. So the first one is start position. So that essentially makes it so you can choose where the sample starts. So this is good for if you want to kind of trim the beginning manually. And then the next one is loop position. So this chooses essentially where you want to loop So if you hold down function and yes, you can preview the sample and then you'll notice that based on wherever you set the loop position, it will loop that specific selection, which if you think about it is very similar to a loop function on a DAW. Some uses of this would be if you're trying to edit the sample or you're trying to make sure that you set the start and end points in the correct spot. By default, the loop is set to the beginning there. So if you just hold function and yes, it just loops from the beginning. Again, the loop function is definitely useful for certain things. You know, sometimes you need to hear the sample over and over in order to edit it properly. So that's what the loop is for. The C encoder is where you set the end position. Now you might ask yourself, you can't really see the waveform very well. You know, you want to set the start and end points better and more accurately. So you need to come down here and use the zoom functions. So the D encoder zooms up and down. So that way you can see more of the actual waveform itself. So you can zoom in a lot, you can zoom out a lot. Again, very similar to a DAW, which is why, you know, ultimately the audio editor is one of the most powerful features of the Octatrack. And that's also why people tend to use the Octatrack as kind of a hub if you're going for like a DAW-less setup. Because you essentially have a lot of the same functions that you would have on a DAW manipulating samples on your Octatrack. So you can zoom up and down. The scroll right here, that just allows you to 
scroll through the sample, and then the F encoder zooms left and right. So this is what you would use if you're trying to set the start and end points. So if you look closely, if you zoom in appropriately here, you'll notice that my particular sample right here actually does have a little bit of, you know, not necessarily silence at the beginning, but you know, the, the wave, the, the main transient doesn't really start until you get over here. So if I wanted to chop that part off, I can just come back up here to my start position and just set that right there. And then I could come over here to yes, and I could also hit set start here. So, but in my case, I'm going to leave it because I have mine set to be a perfect loop of four pages or four bars. It's a perfect four bar loop. So I don't necessarily want to mess with, with that in this case. So, so that's the trim menu. Um, very powerful. The slice menu, this is where things start to get really interesting. Again, you press yes to access the slice functions. And keep in mind that these encoders, they work for every single menu down here, especially for slicing. So go ahead and hit yes. Then you have all these functions here related to slicing. So you can disable the loop function, which all that does is disable what I just mentioned previously about being able to loop the sample over and over. So if you go ahead and hit disable loop and preview that slice, then you'll notice that it just plays the one slice. Nothing crazy there, that's just if you want to hear the slice by itself and check you know, that your slices are where you want them to be essentially. You also have delete slice. Now keep in mind that will delete the selected slice, but that's not going to actually delete the sample or anything like that. If you wanted to reverse one of your slices, you can do that. If you wanted to normalize a slice, you can do that. Um, keep in mind that will most likely make it so one of your slices is a bit louder than the others. So that's something to keep in mind. But also something to keep in mind with slicing, specifically with flex tracks, any changes you make on a flex track, this is, the this is essentially the power of a flex track, any changes you make will preserve the original sample, especially when you turn off, if you turn off the power and you don't necessarily save the project or anything like that, then when you reload the project or turn it back on, all these changes that you made will still preserve the original sample should you want to go back to that. That's kind of the power of a flex track. Delete all slices, that's if you want to kind of start from scratch as far as your slices go. Now create slice grid. This essentially is the easiest way to slice. Now keep in mind I did kind of make a video on slicing before. So if you want to check that out, you can. You can split up your sample into equal slices. So, and you can go anywhere from two slices, which would essentially split it in half, all the way up to 64 slices of equal parts. Now, if you create a slice grid, say I create 16 slices, once you choose how many slices you want, it'll ask align markers to zero crosses. Now all that does, if you press yes, it will essentially adjust the slices to basically where there's no wave. So it, it kind of is a way of making your slices a little more accurate as far as not uh, slicing where, like in the middle of a wave, in the middle of where there's sound. Another way of looking at that is it, it will actually kind of very, very slightly adjust the lengths of the slices in order to make it so all the markers, the start and end markers, again, they start on at, at a very small point where there's no wave. I al almost always press yes, but if you do no, keep in mind that the slices will just be exactly where you asked them to be 
Um, so if you do 16 slices like this, each slice will be equally split into 16 parts. Well, the sample will be split equally into 16 parts. So, okay. So the next one is create linear locks. So what you can do with that is if you already have trigs laid down here, then you hit create linear locks and it will turn each trig into a certain slice starting from one and going all the way up to however many trigs you have or however many slices you have, whichever one comes first. So if that's kind of confusing, say you have four slices down here. I'll show you real quick. So I'm going to remove all these slices slash trigs. Okay. So say I lay four random trigs down here. So if I go back to the audio editor, hit yes, hit create linear locks, alter trigs. That's going to alter these trigs that you laid down here in the recorder. Hit yes. Then if you back out of the audio editor and go back to the recording mode, you'll notice that each of these are flashing. They are indeed locked trigs now, parameter locked. So the parameter that was locked, if you hold them down, you'll notice is the start parameter. That's set to slice four. This one set to slice three, slice two, and slice one. So again, if you do create linear locks, it takes all the trigs that you laid down here and it, it starts assigning the slices to them in a linear order, starting from one. So one, two, three, four. And if I had laid any trigs over here, it would continue on as five, six, seven, however many slices I have, so, or trigs. So whichever, again, whichever one comes first. So if you play these, so you'll notice that it's essentially playing the sample in order based on the slices. So all it does really is parameter lock the start parameter over here. And all the start parameter does when slicing is on is you can select which slice it starts on. So that's why if, if you don't have these locked to a certain slice, it'll just always play the first slice because by default it's set to slice one. So rather than just repeat slice one on all of the trigs that I lay, like this one for example, if I lay that one and hold it down, you'll notice there's no parameter lock. So it, every time I do that, it's just going to play slice one. So, so there you go. So that's an interesting one. And then if you come back to the audio editor, you can now create random locks. So hit yes, alter trigs. Sure. Bam. Now, if you check the start parameter, that one's set to slice five. That one's set to slice six, slice nine, slice 15. And the good thing about using that create random locks or linear locks is it's not gonna create, it's not gonna choose a slice outside of the range of slices that you have. So if you sliced up your sample 16 ways, it's not gonna randomly set one of these to slice 17 or slice 27 or whatever it may be, it will only create random locks within the constraints of how many slices you actually have. So it is really smart in that regard. So, and that's a, an interesting way to remix essentially. I have a video about that, but if you would like more information on remixing, let me know down below and I will create another video about that because live remixing, live resampling and live remixing 
is one of the coolest things that the Octatrack actually does. Go back to the audio editor. Now, oh, also, you can step through your slices here by pressing left and right. So the first one, of course, slice one, two, three, four, and so on. So, so go back to the yes menu. And then the next one is just essentially change view. So, I mean, you might not use that one that much. That's essentially for stereo samples. So if you load your own stereo sample into the Octatrack, or if you record a stereo sample using the inputs, then you can view the left and right channel individually in case there's something you want to do with that. But anyway, so hope that helps you guys. Again, keep an eye out for part two that I'll be releasing later this week. We'll go through the edit menu, the attributes, and the file menu. So there is a lot to go over in the slice menu, so I'll go ahead and leave it there for today. Hope that helps. Leave any questions down below if you have any, any comments, anything. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.